Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and this video is going to be about how to build and understand pedigree, how to solve uh, any problems that involves pedigree and today I have many questions so this video might be a little bit longer than usual but I am going to cover many questions that uh, probably would answer any questions that you may have about how to understand and solve problems that involves pedigree. And here's a problem. Grant uh, had a younger sister, Nana, who died of cystic fibrosis when she was 22. He is 28 now, has recently got married to a woman named Clary and uh, wants to start a family. Whoever Clary knows she is a carrier of cystic fibrosis because her um, two older brothers who were identical twins died of it several years ago and she decided to get tested for the disease allele. No one else in Grant's or Claire's uh, family has ever gotten the illness. Grant's and Claire's parents are still living and healthy. So question A, draw a pedigree for this family using the proper symbols. So uh, let's start from the beginning. So when uh, given that uh, he is a grand person for whom uh, we built this pedigree and of course for his wife Claire they would like to find the probability of their probable uh, children to inherit this genetic disorder. So uh, we have a male that we designate with square. We have a female that is designated with a circle. Both of them are uh, phenotypically normal. And uh, we also know that uh, Claire uh, had uh, two twin brothers who died from this cystic fibrosis genetic disorder. So we can put two twin brothers here. And twin brothers were affected. So we fill with color the boxes that represent her brothers. We know that her brothers were twins. So we connect them like this. That uh, means that this is uh, monozygotic twins or genetically identical twins and we cross these boxes to show that uh, these two persons here already died. And we also know that uh, Grant had a sister who also died so she had cystic fibrosis and we also cross her circle to show that she died and we connect them like this. This is brother and sister and we connect these brothers and sisters here like this and we also know that both families, both parents of these children are phenotypically normal. So we can put uh, mother and father here and we connect with these two children and we connect mother and father of the female with uh, the children and here we add one connection between Grant and Claire. So as you see everything that we need now we have in a, our pedigree and we can move uh, our picture. We need a space and uh, we don't need a verbal problem anymore because this picture represents all the information that we need to know in order to answer all the questions today. So we gave an answer for the first question. We draw a pedigree. Now we can move to the second question. Question B. Could this disease be autosomal recessive? If so, what is the grant's chance of being a carrier? And what is the overall chance that Claire's and Grant's 
first child will have the disease. And as you see, uh, both uh, parents of the uh, Grants and uh, Claire's don't have this genetic disorder, so they have to be carers. Carers, people who is not affected with genetic disorder, but still have one allele that can cause genetic disorder if it's going to be in homozygous form. So genotype, for example, of this child would be small a, small a, and of this two monozygotic twins also would be small a, small a. And genotype of the parents could be capital A and small a, capital A, small a, capital A, small a here, and capital A, small a here. When we have two parents, that is heterozygous, who is a carers, and have normal phenotype, they still have chances to produce offspring that is going to be affected. So here we have capital A, capital A, capital A, small a, capital A, small a here, and small a, small a here. As you see, chances that this heterozygous parents would produce phenotypically normal offspring would be 3 out of 4, but still uh, 1 out of 4 chances would be that they would produce progeny who is going to be affected with this genetic disorder. And uh, parents by themselves would be phenotypically normal. Now we have to calculate chances that if uh, Grant and Claire would have a child and because uh, gender sex of the uh, child is not specified we use this sign so now we have to find the probability that uh, the child would inherit this genetic disorder. As you remember, Claire did her genetic testing and she has found that her genotype is capital A, small a. She knows that she is heterozygous, but uh, her husband didn't uh, make this genetic testing. So uh, how we can calculate the probability that the child would be affected with this genetic disorder. In order to answer this question, we have to find the probability for the grant to be heterozygous for this genetic disorder. And we know that his parents are obligate heterozygous, obligate carers. That's how, by being phenotypically normal, they can produce affected progeny. So this is genotypes of his parents and uh, Grant is phenotypically normal. So he belongs to this group. So what is his chances to be carrier? And uh, his chances would be two out of three. So he belongs to this group and two out of three chances that he is carrier, that he is heterozygous. And if uh, we would take this genotype and would cross with this genotype, this cross wouldn't produce affected uh, progeny. Only when we have one heterozygous parent and another heterozygous parent, such a cross may produce affected progeny. So we are going to find the probability of the grant to be heterozygous. And as you see, probability is 2 out of 3 and not 2 out of 4. Because if he would be, uh, if he would belong to this genotype, he would be affected. And we know that this genetic disorder would be visible early in childhood. And because he is 28, and he is phenotypically normal, we can say that he belongs to this uh, group, but we are not sure what is his genotype, whether it is homozygous dominant or heterozygous. So we can say that his probability to be heterozygous would be 2 out of 3. And we know that uh, his wife, Claire, 
she did uh, genetic testing and she knows that she is uh, heterozygous, so we can put one. We do all our calculations on the scale between 0 and 1, but we also can do our calculations on the scale between 0 and 100%, so it is easy to convert one system into another just by for example multiplying or dividing by 100. So uh, in other words we can say that here we have 100% and here we have 66%. And now we are ready to calculate the chances for the progeny to be affected. So just follow my uh, explanation. We know that Claire is 100% heterozygous, so we put 1, but Grant has probability that is 2 out of 3 to be heterozygous, and if they both heterozygous, they have a probability 1 out of 4 that the progeny would be affected, so 1 out of 4. And now, because this is all uh, independent probabilities, we have to multiply all these probabilities and uh, of course if you prefer you can use uh, decimal numbers so here we would have for example 1 here we would have 0 0.66 and here we would have 0 0.25 you also can convert these numbers into the percentage form so here we would have, uh, as you remember, we have to multiply by 100 or move this decimal point two places to the right. So here we would have 100%, 66% here and 25% here. So uh, our answer here would be 1, 6. And this is going to be probability for the child to be affected with this genetic disorder. So we gave an answer to the second question and question C. Could this disease be autosomal dominant? How do you know? And if uh, this is going to be autosomal dominant or X-link dominant, we would see that this disease would affect uh, at least one parent in each generation. So people are deployed and when we have two alleles and if one would be dominant and if this dominant allele would lead to genetic disorder, of course, phenotype of such person would be affected. With any dominant uh, genetic disorder, we wouldn't be able to see a picture when genetic disorder disappears in one generation and may reappear in the following generation. So if a dominant genetic disorder would disappear in one generation, it wouldn't be able to reappear in the following generation. And the next question, question D, could this disease be X-link recessive? How do you know? And let me show another uh, Punnett square. Imagine that this is X-link genetic disorder. And, uh, for example, genotype of the male can be, uh, for example, defective X chromosome and normal Y chromosome. And as you see, uh, male here cannot belong to this genotype because uh, he has only one X chromosome. And even if it is recessive x link genetic disorder because he don't have another X chromosome with normal dominant allele on it, he would express this genetic disorder and this also applies to this male here. So uh, we only can say that female may have uh, X-link recessive genetic disorder and be phenotypically normal. So even she would have one defective X chromosome because this is X-link recessive genetic disorder and another X chromosome would be normal, so would have normal allele on it, and uh, phenotype of such female would be 
normal. So even if we consider that this female can be heterozygous, can be a carrier, we can say that uh, if it is X-link recessive genetic disorder, this male have to be uh, genotypically normal. So his genotype have to be normal X chromosome and normal Y chromosome. Now let's uh, calculate if uh, we can see such picture as this pedigree if it is going to be uh, X-link recessive. So let's build a Punnett square. So we now know that uh, female can be heterozygous and still be phenotypically normal. And we also know that male is phenotypically normal, so his genotype have to be normal X chromosome and normal Y chromosome. So when we build a Punnett square, as you see, the progeny would be of the follows genotypes. So defective X chromosome here and normal X chromosome here two normal X chromosomes here and defective X chromosome here and normal Y chromosome here and normal X and Y chromosome here. As you see, 100% of the female progeny would be phenotypically normal. Those 50% would be carriers. But because this is X-link recessive genetic disorder, those uh, females that is going to be heterozygous because they have one normal X chromosome with normal uh, allele on it that is uh, dominant. Her phenotype would be normal just like her mother phenotype. But 50% of the male progeny would be affected because males doesn't have another X chromosome to balance this defective X chromosome. So even those, this is going to be recessive genetic disorder in 50% of the male progeny, this would uh, express itself. And we call males to be hemizygous for the X chromosome. And now let's return to our pedigree and what we see in this family, we see the two unaffected people has affected daughter. And this is impossible according to our Punnett square if this genetic disorder would be X-link recessive. So we can exclude such possibility. And uh, the last question would be could this disease be X-link dominant? How do you know? And this is impossible because uh, once again, if we take a look at these three genotypes, if uh, this is going to be X-link dominant genetic disorder and male would have such defective X chromosome, he would be affected. So male here cannot have this genetic disorder. And if female, those, she has two X chromosomes. But if we assume that this is X-link dominant genetic disorder, her phenotype would be affected. So neither of the females uh, are affected. So we can say that uh, this is not X-link dominant genetic disorder. No females, no males are affected here. And as you see, there is no way how dominant X-link genetic disorder can uh, be passed to the progeny without at least one of the parents to be affected. So we gave an answer to the last question. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please write your comments, questions if you have any. And see you in the next video. Goodbye.